Hey teachers! So I recently took an online course for advanced Google Apps users. And one of the things that I learned when I took this course is there are so many Google Apps out there. We always think about the obvious ones like slides and sheets and docs and classroom, but there are so many more that we're not using that really could be helpful in the classroom. So in this video, I want to share about one of the things that I learned in this course, and that is Google Sites, because it is an awesome tool, not only for you, but also for your students. So if you have ever wanted to build a website for your class, you know that it can get a little complicated depending on what source you use. You also may have thought about having your students build a website for a form of summative assessment, but once again, it can be a little complicated. Google Sites are an easy, easy option for creating websites. It's so simple to use. Let's jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how to get there and how to start building a site straight away. So we are at the homepage for Google Sites right now. You'll notice it looks very similar to the homepage for say Google Docs or Google Slides. And if you don't know how to get to this page, just type Google Sites into your search bar and it will be the first thing that comes up. Now, like with Google Slides and Docs, it's gonna give you templates to pick from. So if you kind of want them to help you get started, you can pick a template, but we're gonna go ahead and start with a blank Google site. So that way I can show you how to get things set up and I can show you some of my favorite features. Now, this is kind of gonna be like your homepage. So this is the front page of your site and you've got your header here. You can change the image to anything you want. You can upload an image or you can select an image from their gallery. So let's scroll through and I'm gonna find something that I like. I like the colors in this, so let's go with this one. And then let's say that I'm just creating a Google site for my class, so we can call this Mrs. Vestal's class. And you'll notice whenever you type on, or whenever you click on anything, whether it's text or an image, uh, it's gonna give you options. So I can play with the size of the text, I can make it bold if I want, but there's always gonna be some options to kind of modify and customize things whenever you click on text or an image. Now after we've got the header here, we can start adding things below it. And you've got a couple of options when you do that. You can use one of these layouts that it has already created. So if I click on this layout, it will appear here. I could type a little message here and then add a class picture over here. So using the pre-made layouts makes things very, very easy. You can also add things yourself. So if I want to add a text box, I could do that. And the nice thing is, is it will actually let you change the size of things. So if I wanted to add an image, I could drag this image and put it here. It's very customizable. So you can very easily move text and different things around on your Google site. Now, anytime you want to delete something, you're just gonna click this trash can. And then you've got a couple of other options as well. If you hit this, it's going to duplicate the section. So let's say I wanted to reuse that and just type different information and put a different image. I could duplicate it to make it easy. And then this is also a tool that allows you uh, to change your background. So once again, you could upload an image, you can select an image, it will kind of give you some different color options. But like I said, everything in Google Sites is so customizable. Now I will also show you, you've got all of these options down here as well. Now I showed you the layouts, I showed you the text box, we talked about the images, and you've also got some other cool options here as well. This will allow you to embed a link to a website 
or if you have HTML for some kind of interactive, you can embed that as well. And this is actually something that I love. You can embed resources from your Google Drive onto your Google site. So if I click on this, I'm just gonna click on the first thing that comes up. Here's my fourth grade morning work. I can click on that and it has embedded that Google Slide presentation onto my site, which is so incredibly helpful. And like I said, then you can make it bigger or do whatever you want with it. I'm gonna delete that for now though. And then there are so many options down here that you can use. And I'm just gonna show you a few of my favorites because I don't want this video to go on forever. But collapsible text is one that I really love. And this is maybe you have questions and then you want to hide the responses. So we could type, what will we learn this year? And then I would type the response here. And what's gonna happen is when students look at this page, they'll just see the question. So they can think about the question and then when they're ready, drop down and see the answer. So the collapsible text is one that I use quite often. Another one that I really love is the image carousel. And basically you can upload as many images to this as you want. And it's going to create a carousel that your students can scroll through and look at the different images. So let's say I'm teaching about George Washington. I could create kind of like a slideshow of George Washington that students can scroll through and look at the different images. I like to use the button when I have a link that I want my students to go to, but I don't want it to look super messy with the link. So let's say that I have a game that I want my students to play. I could say, click here to play math game and then put the link here and it will show up as a button on the site that the students click on and not some great big long URL. The divider can be used to break up information. You see it's just a line that appears here on the screen. Um, YouTube is one that I use quite often and this will allow you to embed videos directly into your site. And since Google and you, since YouTube is owned by Google, it's really nice because you can search for videos inside of your Google site. So let's say I want to find one of my videos. I could type in Vestal's 21st Century Classroom. And it has pulled up all of my videos. And I could select one and it will embed here in my lesson. And once again, if I wanna make it bigger, I can do that, but it will embed my video directly from YouTube, which is uh, a very helpful tool. With the calendar, you can upload dates directly from your Google Calendar onto your site. So if you are making a class site and you want uh, parents to be aware of dates, you can attach your calendar to that and those dates will show up. Map can be fun for different things. I have a video all about how to create uh, Google My Maps, which is different from Google Maps. This is one that I actually created in that video. So I could select that and embed it here. And it shows places that students want to visit on the map. So this is one thing that I love, is just really anything that you have created inside of any of your Google apps you can embed. So here I can pick one of my slides, like I showed you how I put my fourth grade morning work in there. But really all of these here, you can take anything that you've created in a Google app and you can add it to your site, which is so cool. It's very easy to add multiple pages to your site. So this is the home page, like I said, the front page that everybody sees. And now I wanna add a page for announcements and I wanna add a page for homework. So I'm gonna click on pages up here and then I'm going to click the plus sign and I'll make an announcements page. And I will make a page for homework and I'll also make a page for additional resources. 
and you'll notice that that is what the heading becomes for each of these pages. If you want to move your pages around, that's very easy to do. So let's say you want homework to be after the home page. You can just move that here and you'll see the different pages are listed up here. Um, I can move announcements back to being first. Another thing that you can do is you can create drop down menus. So basically like pages within pages. So let's say I want the additional resources to be included with homework. I would just hover over top of that and it will create a drop down menu. So you'll see if I uh, hover over this arrow on homework, then it gives me additional resources. Now anytime you want to preview what you've created, you're just going to click on this up here where it says preview and it will show you what you have so far. So you can see I have this drop down menu and I can click on that. I can go back to homework. I can go back to the home page and see what I have so far. I can also look to see what it would look like on mobile view or on a tablet. The preview is very, very helpful. And when you're ready to exit the preview, just hit the X. Now, the next thing I want to show you are the themes. Um, this will allow you to change things up once again if you're looking for a little bit of help. Now, it, if you click on a theme, there it will most likely change everything that you have. Uh, or not everything, but some parts of what you have. So it did change my fonts and colors, um, but you can also switch the colors as well. And you can change the colors to anything that you want. So the themes are just another way that you can customize things and make it look the way that you want it to look. Now, the very last thing I wanna show you is your share settings, because just like any other Google app, they're share settings for a Google site. Now, when you are in here building your site, it is not out there for everyone to see until you click publish. But let's say you have, oops, clicked on the wrong thing, sorry. You're gonna click on the share with others. Cause let's say you have your students creating a Google site as a form of summative assessment. And before they publish their sites and are able to view each other's sites, you want to see what they've created. So you would click on the share with people or groups and down here where it says links, we're going to click change and it's going to show us the different options. So right now my site is in draft mode. I haven't published it yet. And if you have students working on it and you want them or you want to be able to view their site before they publish it you're going to keep it on restricted and you are going to have them share it with you and so then only you can view it you can give them feedback and then say okay now you can publish it now same thing when it's published you can decide whether it's restricted, meaning only people you've shared it with can view it or whether anybody can view it. Um, if it's restricted and you want everyone in the class to be able to view it, they're gonna have to share it with everyone in the class. But I usually leave things set up this way. In draft mode, I keep it restricted and have them share it with the teacher. In published mode, I have it as public. Now, once they are ready, the site is done, you've approved it if you need to do that, they're gonna click publish. And the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to create a web address. So basically it's going to look like this and then we're gonna customize it by adding something to the end. So I might just put Vestal's class and you'll see this is what the site is going to look like down here. And it came up with a check, which means that that name is available. If this does not check, that means that that web address is already taken and you're gonna need to change it. I've gotten some questions. Why can't I create a custom URL? And you can if you want to, but you're going to have to purchase a domain name and it's gonna cost you money to do that. So, um, if you're interested in going that route, just click manage and it will guide you through that process. And then if you want to change who can view it, just click manage and it will take you back to that screen that I just showed you. And the last one is search settings. 
and usually I check this if it's for classroom purposes and it says request public search engines to not display my site. So that means that if your students have created a site or you've created a class site, none of those things are really meant to be for everyone. They're meant to be for your students in your class or parents. So I always check this just because I don't really need my stuff to show up on public search engines. And then students are just gonna click publish. And that is the basics of how you build a Google site. Now, there are literally so many possibilities for using Google Sites in the classroom. You can use it to build a class website where you're listing assignments and announcements and news. You could build it as a resource website. So maybe you teach math and you want to provide some additional videos and tips and different things to help students when they are completing homework at home. You could also have your students build a Google site to show what they learned over the course of a unit or even the course of an entire school year. For example, if you teach social studies, you could have students build a site all about U.S. history and add a different page for each unit that they learn throughout the school year. There's literally so many possibilities and I'm sure you have thought of ways to use this that I haven't thought of. So if you've come up with another way for using Google Sites that I didn't mention in this video, go ahead and share it in the description below because you might inspire um, another teacher that watches this. And then after you let me know, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel because I am uploading new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any of them. So until next time, happy teaching.